بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Honorable and respected brothers, distinguished and esteemed sisters, <clears throat> we are currently passing through the third month of the Islamic or the lunar calendar uh, known as Rabi' al-Awwal. Rabi' al-Awwal. This is the third month of the uh, Islamic calendar. Unlike the, some of the other months which are explicitly mentioned by Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran where there are some virtues that, is, uh, th that are attached to this month by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like the four sacred months Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ ثَنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمْ The four sacred months and then we know the blessings of the month of Ramadan, the month of Dhul Hijjah and so on and so forth. So there are certain days, certain months, certain occasions which Allah Azza wa Jal either explicitly mentions or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speak about certain rewards. Uh, nowhere in the Quran, nor in the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is there any reward that is attached to this third month. But despite this, or shall I say in spite of this, this is a very blessed month. Why? The reason this is a very blessed month is because in our history, uh, this is where our history begins as Muslims, okay, as the Islamic civilization. This is the, uh, the beginning point, the watershed of our history, of our very existence, of our very salvation and uh, of our success. Had it not been for this month or the arrival of the, in the form and the manifestation of the arrival of the blessed personality of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would have been in the depths and the darknesses of ignorance. Uh, it was the birth of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that occurred in this month. That occasion and that arrival that everyone, not just humankind, not just mankind, but even the animal kingdom, even the inanimate objects, the universe itself was waiting for. The very arrival of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? The reason for this is because the existence and the arrival of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was nothing but mercy for everything and for everyone around him. Those that knew him and those that didn't know him. Those whom he knew and those whom he equally did not know. Allah Azza wa Jal categorically mentions in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ I did not send you except as a mercy not only for Muslims, not only for non-Muslims, للعالمين, not just for this universe, for all of the planets, the Milky Way, the galaxies, the stars, for everything and everyone. You are a token of mercy. Even for the angels, those angels whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created out of his own created light. These are subtle bodies, the celestial creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ عِبَادٌ مُكْرَمُونَ لَا يَعْسُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ These blessed creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who let alone disobeying Allah, not even for a moment do they even endeavor or even entertain to endeavor to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't disobey Allah, they don't even think about disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are perpetually in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in, in the heavens, مَا مِن مَوْضِعْ أَرْبَعْ أَصَابِعْ إِلَّا وَفِيهِ مَلَكٌ قَائِمٌ لِلَّهِ أَوْ رَاكِعٌ أَوْ سَاجِدٌ That in the heavens there isn't even sufficient space to put four fingers, except that there is an angel to be found, either standing in the worship of Allah, either prostrating in the worship of Allah, or either bowing down in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even these angels felt the mercy of the existence of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On one occasion, because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam developed a very close bond and a relationship with the foremost angel, Gabriel, Jibreel Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, who was Aminullahi Al Wahi, Allah trusted him with his revelation and he would bring this message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah and reveal it directly onto the heart of the, the blessed heart of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam obviously on the first occasion because Jibreel is a very strong body, a very strong individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him. 
when uh, when Allah describes Jibreel, Allah says, "Shadidu al-Qawa thu mirra." He's extremely powerful. He's extremely mighty. When this the first encounter of the Messenger Sallallahu with Jibreel, he squeezes the Messenger Sallallahu and we know the, uh, the the history of the Quranic revelation, the first few verses that were revealed on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He squeezes the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so hard. The Hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Hatta balagh minni al jahd." He tired me just by one hug, one squeeze. You know, sometimes when you meet someone after so long, and especially if it's someone who's quite strong and they squeeze you, you find, you find it really difficult, especially someone like myself who is, you know, slightly thin or slightly slim. I find it really difficult. Here, this is an angel, not another human being. This is an angel. And he squeezes the Messenger Sallallahu Hatta Balagha Minni Al Jahd. The Messenger Sallallahu began breathing heavily. He began pulsating. He began perspiring. He began sweating. This is the power of Jibreel. So at the beginning, it was a very frightening experience for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But because uh, at regular intervals, Jibreel would come and communicate with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam developed this bond and this friendship with Jibreel Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. So one day the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, out of, out of love, out of companionship, out of friendship, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Jibreel that, Oh Jibreel, zurna akthara mimma tazuruna. That why don't you visit me more regularly? I know you come, and each time you come, you come down with revelation, but why don't you come down on other instances as well, without revelation? Why don't you just visit me regularly? So Jibreel said, and he came down with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ Rabbik." Allah quotes the statement of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says to Jibreel, this is the answer you need to give. Because Jibreel doesn't know how to answer the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A close friend, what if I offend him? So Allah said to Jibreel, it's fine, I will give you the answer <coughs> and the response. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, say to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we only come down with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only come down with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel says that when Allah calls me to give me the revelation, the specific revelation and I come down, then obviously I visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I present myself in the, uh, in, in, in the esteemed presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my normal form, my normal shape, which is this mighty strong shape and form. However, whenever you send me back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a specific question, with a specific request, then at that time when I go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then even me, I have to humble myself in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this time now, I have come as your messenger. I have not come as the messenger of Allah to you. This time I have come as your messenger to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel says that it's even the angels in the heavens who felt your mercy, who benefit of your very existence, the existence of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this month of Rabi'u al-Awwal, even though there is no specific mention, no specific verse, Quranic verse, hadith that speaks about, the, that extols the virtues of this month. But definitely this is the month in which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in this uh, temporary abode, in this temporary universe. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. This is unanimous according to all of the historians. <coughs> now obviously when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born, uh, at that time and let alone seven eight hundred years ago a thousand years ago just I'm sure many of you can even experience this as well probably if you ask your parents your parents would tell you that when they were born the, the the culture was not there of documenting the date of birth and that's the reason why when they had to make their passport then they would have to estimate and just roughly put in some date so when the messenger Sassam was born it was not the practice to document the date hence we do not know of the specific dates in which the Messenger Sallallahu was born, on which the Messenger Sallallahu was born. There are multiple opinions. Aisha radiallahu anha mentions the Messenger Sallallahu was born on the third of Rabi'ul al Awwal. Other companions say the Messenger Sallallahu was born on the eighth of Rabi'ul al Awwal. Others say on the ninth of Rabi'ul al Awwal. Others say on the twelfth of Rabi'ul al Awwal, which is generally accepted as the birth date of the Messenger Sallallahu However, you know, there's, there's multiple opinions. So specifically, we do not know exactly what date the Messenger Sallallahu was born. For sure, he was born in the month of Rabi'ul al Awwal. And we equally know for sure and certainty the day on which the Messenger Sallallahu was born. It was a Monday. How do we know this? The hadith is in Sahih Muslim. A companion comes to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Su'ila Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi an Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi would regularly fast on Mondays and Thursdays. The month of Ramadan, he would fast anyway. 
That was obligatory. But the Messenger ﷺ would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala voluntarily as well. Every Monday and Thursday, the Messenger ﷺ would fast. So someone came up to the Messenger ﷺ and asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast on Mondays? Specifically, why do you fast on Mondays? So the Messenger ﷺ responded by saying, Fihi wulidtu wa fihi unzila alayya. I was born on a Monday. That's the reason I fast out of to show gratitude and to show my thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm thankful for Allah that He allowed my birth. He allowed me to benefit those around me. He allowed myself to benefit, from, uh, benefit equally benefit from those around me. This is the reason why out of gratitude, out of gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to celebrate your birthday, this is how you celebrate your birthday by fasting on that day. This is how you show gratitude and gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is precisely what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa did. This is how he showed his thankfulness and his gratitude to the Messenger sallallahu, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa equally said, وَفِيهِ unzila." This is interesting. So I was born on a Monday and equally the first revelation that came to me was also on a Monday. So the first advent, or the first event that took place in the month of Rabi'ul al Awwal, major event, the great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the birth of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa on a Monday. We are not, we're unsure regarding the date, but we know the day and the month. Monday, some Monday in the month of Rabi'ul al Awwal. The second major event that took place in the seerah and in the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa on this day was, so firstly, we received the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in this month. Secondly, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi began receiving Qur'an in this month. He began receiving, well not just Qur'an, but he began receiving the inception of revelation. The beginning and the commencement of revelation took place in this month. How? One might say that we heard and we read that the Qur'anic revelation began in the month of Ramadan. So why are you saying Rabi'ul al awwal Correct. The Qur'anic revelation began in the month of Rabi'ul al awwal However, the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha says, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, awwalu ma budi'a, that the first signs of revelation that began, because obviously this is, you know, revelation is very difficult, and I think I spoke about this some time back as well, that the Qur'an was very burdensome and overwhelming to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa very heavy, very weighty for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa it was very heavy for the Messenger Sallallahu So obviously Allah could not send down revelation all of a sudden. You know at times when there's, when there's an adversity, a difficulty in your life, some, some sad news that, that breaks unto you all of a sudden, your reaction is very different. It could lead to an individual panicking, heart attacks and so on. So hence, Allah began preparing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in advance, six months in advance. How? الرُّؤْيَا الصَّالِحَةً The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would view and he would see true righteous dreams. جَاءَتْ مِثْلَ فَلَقِ الصُّبْحِ He would see the dream at night and the dream would visualize and he would see the manifestation of that dream the very next morning. One interpretation of this is the dream would be so vivid as though you see the early dawn, as though you see the sun rising. That's how vivid the dream of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be. So for six months, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw this dream. Now if the first revelation of the, the Qur first Quranic revelation took place in Ramadan, so let's go back six months, that will take us to the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, right? Six months. So the revelation began Rabi'ul Awwal. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam considered these dreams to be the signs of revelation. Number three, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. This was the third of Rabi'ul Awwal. So the very establishment of the first Muslim state, city state, if you'd like to say, was in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. And number four, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left this world. His sad demise took place in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal as well. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu is a companion of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لما قدم رسول الله صلى الله عليه المدينة, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Medina, the hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, when he entered Medina, أَضَاءَ فِيهَا كُلُّ شَيْءٍ The moment he entered Medina, everything in Medina became radiant, became bright and shone. But the day the Messenger Sallallahu left Medina, أَظْلَمَ فِيهَا كُلُّ شيء. Everything in Medina became dark. There was darkness overshadowing the entire Medina. He says, we just about buried the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَنْكَرْنَا قُلُوبَنَا We just buried him. 
and we could realize the difference in our spirituality. Our spirituality became weak. Just by burying the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we began losing our spirituality. This was the loss at the demise of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So four major events took place in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. Now generally what happens, I will spend the next two or three minutes speaking about this. What happens in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, instead of enjoying the uh, the arrival of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learning lessons from the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the lessons that we equally learn from the demise of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What happens in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal? Every single year, every single year without fail, there's elements in our Muslim community that are fighting, that are debating. Over who? Over the very personality that came as a token of mercy. Not just for his followers, but equally for his enemies. And we are fighting over him. Do we celebrate his birthday? Or do we not celebrate his birthday? Is it shirk? Is it bid'ah to celebrate his birthday? Or is it fard? Or is it wajib to celebrate the birthday? If you celebrate his birthday, then that means you are a perfect believer. If you don't celebrate his birthday, that means you are disrespectful to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No. We all show our love to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in different ways. If you celebrate his birthday, good luck to you. If you don't celebrate his birthday, good luck to you too as well. As long as we all love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and none of us deny the love of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is fundamental to our belief, to our creed, to our dogma. We all love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is crucial, this is important. But how do we manifest this, lo this love? There's different ways. Some of us recite poetry. Some of us read the seerah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of us try to practice and be like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imitate the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then there are some of us who would like to put up lights. There are some of us that like to uh, you know, bake cakes. Some of us that would like to uh, spend nights singing the praise of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a juristic difference. This is a fiqhi ikhtilaf. This is a juristic difference. Like there are thousands of differences amongst the ulama and the scholars, this is just but one of them. Okay, so there's no point fighting and raising arms and uh, being mean and being notorious and, and being fanatic over your view and against the view of the next. This is not what we learn from the message from the life of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I just end with one example from the life of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If there's anything we take from the life of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam from this month, then let it be this conduct of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this beautiful character of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is what's really important. It's not important whether you celebrate his birthday or you don't celebrate his birthday. What's important is, are you trying to follow his teachings or not? That's what's important. What's the point celebrating his birthday and not following his message? Or what's the point not celebrating his birthday and not following his message as well? Just one incident. Look at the mercy the Messenger Sassam showed and the love he had. I'm not speaking about his Sahaba and the Muslims and those who believed in him. Those who hurt him. Those who spent every single minute, every single moment plotting and planning the murder and the assassination and causing harm to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A notorious individual by the name of Ubay ibn Salul. He was known as Ra'sul Munafiqeen. The leader of the hypocrites. So he wasn't just hypocritical. He was the leader and the Imam of the hypocrites. He left no stone unturned in hurting the Messenger Sallallahu Okay, when he died, his son, who was a companion, a Sahabi, father is an ardent enemy, the son is a companion of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Ubay. Abdullah comes to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, Ya Rasulallah, my father has passed away. I know my father is going to sink in the depths of hellfire. He is going to burn and he is going to roast in hell fire for the, for the pain that he has caused you. But I have one wish, Ya Rasulallah, one wish. Please give me the shirt that you are wearing and let me use this as his kafan to shroud him. What does the Messenger Sassam say? Instantly, without even thinking, the Messenger Sassam removes his shirt. He tolerates being, his body being naked at the top. He removes his shirt, the only shirt he was wearing, and he gives it to him. And he says, go use this as the shroud to cover the body of your father. Abdullah then says, you know they say if someone gives you your, their, ha their hands don't pull the whole arm. This is exactly what Abdullah does. He says, Ya Rasulullah, if you were kind enough to give me his kafan, why don't you just visit us at his grave as well? The messenger saw him, says, okay. When you are about to bury him, then call me. So Abdullah goes, they arrange for the funeral and the burial. They're about to bury him. Remember, this is the ardent enemy of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A hypocrite, the leader of the hypocrites. 
Abdullah comes to the Messenger وسلم, and says, Ya Rasulullah, we are about to bury, in fact, we've already buried him. We're about to throw the sand over his body. So the Messenger وسلم, rushes with his companions. Not alone, he takes his companions, he's teaching them a lesson. He takes his companion and he says, come, let's go. And then he goes to the grave. The hadith is in the Sahihain. He goes to the grave. And then he says to Abdullah, why did you bury him? You should have left him. The Messenger وسلم, himself goes down into the grave. And then the Messenger وسلم, takes off the shirt he was wearing at that time as well, the second shirt. And the Messenger وسلم, shrouds him with his own hands. And then the Messenger وسلم, places his own blessed saliva into the mouth of his ardent enemy. His ardent enemy. He places his own blessed saliva into his mouth. And then the Messenger وسلم, stands, comes out of the grave. He stands and he says, form your lines. Why? He says, I'm about to lead his Salatul Janazah. This is a kafir, a disbeliever, a hypocrite. The Messenger وسلم, says, we need to lead his Salatul Janazah. Umar radiallahu anhu couldn't bear this. He comes running from the back to the Messenger وسلم, for jathabahu. He pulls the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He lost his senses. Ya Rasulullah, do you know what you're doing? The Messenger وسلم, says to Umar, Da'ni ya Umar. Oh Umar, leave me, get away from here. Allah has said to me, Istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum. Seek their repentance or don't seek their repentance. In Even if you seek repentance for them 70 times, Allah will not forgive them. The Messenger وسلم, says, That's all Allah has said to me. I will seek forgiveness for him more than 70 times. Allah didn't say to me, You can't lead his Salatul Janaza. Leave me alone, O oh Umar. The Messenger وسلم, says, Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He actually leads the Salatul Janaza of this hypocrites of his ardent enemy who spent every moment harming the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam walks away and as he's walking that's the time the quran comes wala tusalli ala ahadin minhum mata that now you cannot lead salatul janaza on anyone after him on any disbeliever after him this is the mercy of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam if there's any anything we take from this month from the teachings of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam just one thing we take let it be this good akhlaq, this good conduct of the Messenger وسلم, with our friends, with friends and with foe, equally with enemies, with everyone. The love and the mercy of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.